Today, you are going to listen in on a very important conversation, and I need you to remain hidden the whole time. Can you do that for me? Of course you can, because I will hide you. Lonnie has just awoken, and I think Hattie will, well, you know, and I'm very serious about my ships, so you will listen in on this conversation. Besides, what if the two of them get married? They'll be very happy if I had this romantic confession on tape. Okay. Here we go. Goodness, I hope I'm not too late. Hello, Lonnie. How are you feeling? Fine. Oh, that's good to hear. I just came to check on how you were doing. Fantastic. Okay. Has Hattie visited you yet? No. Okay. Well, I hope you get better. Me too. Right. Well, this has been awkward enough. I shall see you later. Bye. Lonnie, I heard you were awake. Yep. Are you okay? Could be better. Oh, come on. I know you're more talkative than this. You've been trying to crack me for days, and I know exactly what you're doing. You just want to woo me. So what if I do? Oh, come on. Please. Just. I was so worried about you. When I saw those awful people hold you down, I was so worried. And we didn't know what they drugged you with. You were out for almost three weeks. Do you know that? Figured as much. Lonnie. Hattie, I don't exactly know what you want from me. To be honest... I don't know either, Lonnie. You know, I was so depressed after the men in masks kidnapped me a second time. After the first time they'd stolen me, I just... I threw myself into parties, hoping to escape that pain in my heart. I'd lost so much. I felt like I didn't know myself anymore. But it was more than that. I... I thought I should celebrate life to the fullest. And even though Captain Alex saved my life, and I owe, still owe, them everything. I knew what the deal was. There was no family here for me. And I always felt so alone. But Lonnie, when I saw you, I just... I knew. Oh, what? What could you have possibly known? That. That look right there. It's the same one I see in the mirror every time. I... Please, Lonnie, please tell me about yourself because I can see the pain you hide so clearly. No. Yes. You really want to know? I want to know it all. Fine. Back on Cecilia, well, as you know, the native sea dwellers don't exactly come out to play. We prefer to stay in the ocean. We hated humans. But we didn't really care that they took the repulsive land we never used anyway. We still didn't enjoy them. In my culture, there is one societal role that gains more respect than any political leader. And that role is the role of the sea sorceress. And my mother held that role. She controlled powers that no one not even I, understood. She was powerful and fearsome. No one would dare go against her. If not out of fear of her power, but out of fear of her ripping tentacle strength. She had tentacles? Hush. This is my story. Sorry. She was so respected. So you can only imagine how hard it was for my people when they found out that she had had an affair with a human male. They were so angry with her, but they could do nothing about it. No one would dare go against her. So when I was born, well, certainly no one really celebrated it. They congratulated her, but knowing that I was 
this cash and well I know what they really thought and even though she had so much power she couldn't give me friends she couldn't give me a real place in society I had gone above and beyond to be the perfect warrior because of what those people thought of me and yet it still wasn't enough so you were alone I suppose you were too that look yeah I know my mother she used to tell me stories of the man who was supposedly my father she said Matthew Cadwell was so handsome and so loving and he'd swept her off her tentacles on this one so she did have tentacles I heard that sorry she knew it was wrong for so many reasons if not being a sea dweller wasn't a reason. Being married certainly was. She knew he had a wife, but apparently it was only a political marriage. Apparently even his wife knew this. Oh no, you haven't told Edgar, have you? No. I may not be so good with people, but I know better. And besides, my mother told me about the Cadwell heirs. She said that I was one of many, only I was special because I was the only girl and also the only half-breed. Edgar and I are the only ones to actually be conceived. So you two do have something in common? Not in the least. We're as different as can be. And I can see it in his eyes. I cause him pain. I think my mother sometimes has that pain, but I never see it. She hides it too well. Why would you say that? How... How would you feel if all you did was bring dishonor to your mother's name? Lonnie, I think your mother knew what she was getting into when she fell in love with Mr. Cadwell. And I may not know her, but I think I can safely say she loves you. Otherwise, why would she bother protecting you or making sure you grew up to be strong? I... Hey, it's okay. Look at Ernest. He loves you, and so does Paige and Riggs. And I know Clint and Alex may seem scary, but they care, and Edgar's just in shock. Give him some time. And you? What? What about you? What? What, ab what about me? You told me that everyone else cares. What about you? I... Did you do it yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, it appears I have interrupted something important. Ha <laughs> silly me. I want your spleen on a platter, oh. now! Oh my... It's okay, Paige, she doesn't mean that. <laughs> yes, I do. Um... Well, Alex told me to come get you anyways, had he? We need directions, if we're going to fly to Capello's planetary system. Oh my, I almost forgot we were heading there. What? We have to go to the Capello system for a little while. Clint got some leads that the Backsox are there for some sort of business meeting, and we could probably catch up with them if we hurry. And it's probably a good idea. The Capello system is known for their medical advancements, so we can probably find a doctor for our injured. Then someone can hopefully attach the arm page made for me, and maybe we can help out Ernest? Then it seems... You are needed. I am, but I will come back for you. Uh, go, go. You should go now. Of course. I will see you soon. Bye, Hattie. Oh, Lonnie. I'm so happy for you. Hattie is such a catch. I am truly jealous. Why are you moving over there? No reason. What did you just grab off the table? Nothing. That's your pathetic audio diary, isn't it? Oh, if you recorded that, I swear I will rip your heart out through your eye sockets. Bye, Lonnie. Hope you feel better. Paige! Oh, yes, that's right. Lonnie. What? This is 
episode of Captains and Airships was written and produced by Ashley Glenn and brought to you by Blackmore Productions. The voice of Paige Hopkinson was Clover Grayson. The voice of Lonnie Cadwell was Katrina DeBold. And the voice of Hattie Wells was Becca DeVilla. Like what we do here? Become a Glovescriber today and follow us on Facebook, Tumblr, YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes. Or visit us on our website, blackmoreproductions.com. Would you like exclusive material found nowhere else? Donate to our Patreon today and get all your favorite podcast gear. Until then, swim deep in the sea, fellow Sicilian dwellers. Blackmore Productions. Swim against the current.